All right, everyone. Hello. Um, well, welcome to this video. If you are here, you are probably here because of the title or because you know me personally. So my name is Mindy Hopper or Shaper for those who don't know me. And I decided to make this vlog to talk about um, the process of becoming a, a surrogate and particularly, I guess, an Orthodox Jewish married surrogate, if that makes any difference to those that it makes a difference to. So um, I'm actually not a vlog person. I don't really watch vlogs. Um, I don't. Anyway, no reason to tell you why I don't really watch vlogs, but um, I figured that this might be an interesting experience for some people. And really my main reason is that um, there are lots of people who need surrogates out there. And if making this video will encourage people to become a surrogate and help the families who cannot have babies help them have it, um, then then that's a useful, worthwhile video. And um, I think there are also people who are just curious, <laughs> like to like be voyeurs into other people's lives. So as much as, um, I can tell you about my experience on my end, I will. So let me give a bit of background. Hi, I'm Mindy Schopper. For those who don't know me, I am um, currently 33. I'm going to be 34 by the time the baby is born, God willing. Um, and I decided to become a surrogate. So why did I decide? Actually, I should probably tell you a bit more about myself. Okay, a bit more background. 33, I am married to the wonderful Yoel Schopper, who I will make talk for this video soon later. And I have two kids. They are now um, 11 and 10. A bit more background. I'm from Brooklyn, New York originally. I'm from Borough Park. I grew up Hasidish actually. I became modern Orthodox um, as a as an adult, which is another whole story. <laughs> and I currently live in Linden, New Jersey. Technically Roselle, but whatever. The Linden community. Um, after having lived a bit in Israel, got married there. Um, I went to Memphis, Tennessee. We lived there for five years. Wonderful community. And now we live in the wonderful community of Linden, New Jersey. So about myself, I have a bachelor's in psychology, English, and studies. Um, I then did an MBA in marketing. I helped start Project Muckum. Um, I have a podcast called The Story Tinker, which is at Webtoons. Um, I like to read. I like to write. I have poetry that I've written and music videos. You can check it out on my website. This is going to be very self-promotional. Anyway, so um, why did I decide to become a surrogate? So a bit more of like bragging or whatever, but I also donated my kidney and they're really both for the same reason. And the process is exactly the same. I, people need it. I want to do it. I mean, it's really that simple. It's not something that's hard for me. Another background, I um, don't find medical things difficult at all. I have a very optimistic, lackadaisical attitude. Thank God, Baruch Hashem, I'm very healthy. So never concerned about things that potentially could go wrong. I always assume things would go well. And not just that, I look at statistics, I'm like, well, why would it go wrong? This, you know, has gone well, it will go well, and <laughs> it'll go well for me too. So literally the same thing. I saw an ad um, when I, when I was like 14, I saw an ad in the Jewish paper about someone who needed a kidney. I told myself when I grow up, I'm gonna become, I'm gonna donate my kidney. Kept forgetting about it when I got older. Finally, I saw an ad, I was like, don't forget, just do it. I did it, fine. Uh, with surrogacy. When I first heard about surrogacy, I was like, okay, this is this is great. I, I have to do this for, for someone else. And I looked up the um, the halachos, the, the Jewish laws about um, surrogacy because I am an Orthodox person and I wanted to know what there was to be said about that. So I looked them up. Um, there's a debate about whether a married Jewish woman can be a surrogate. I obviously came out on the side that, that they can be. So you can go look it up on your own. And um, I remember I had done this years ago and I just forgot about it because, you know, you just forget about things. <laughs> so um, at some point, maybe it was like a year ago, I was on Facebook, which are wonderful things. And I saw an ad, someone was looking for a surrogate, a Jewish surrogate. And I was like, okay, can't forget about it. And um, I didn't do it with that person. I don't even remember what it was, but I typed online. Jewish surrogate agency and I found an agency and I was like, hey, I'm a Jewish surrogate. There are, you know, there are a lot of people who only want a Jewish surrogate. I'm here and ready. <laughs> so I went through the process with one surrogacy agency. So I'm gonna, and then I, um, I'm gonna talk about that. So basically you fill out an application, um, I called it back and the agency at the time, um, I said the only thing I wanted was I wanted to work with a a Jewish couple that was religious. That was my one, stipula one stipulation. And it had another stipulation. Um, I wanted a couple that would not um, 
that only believed in abortion if the the child could not make it, if they you know wouldn't survive. So those are the two things that I wanted. And the first agency didn't have any couple. They didn't have a Jewish couple at the time. So I said, okay, thank you. I'm gonna look for another agency. So I did. I looked for another agency, and the agency was so excited, and they were like, great, we have three couples. And um, I was like, they're like three Orthodox couples, and I was like. Just, just check with them, check that they can work with a married surrogate because I know that a lot of people don't want a Jewish a married surrogate. Um, so they were like, oh, no, we'll look at, you know, they will ask them. They asked them and they, they said, like their, their rabbi asked, um, was your husband born Jewish? And I was like, no, my husband was not born Jewish, but he converted Orthodox, <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> and I was like, let them know. And then they came back, they're like, yeah, the rabbi says it's fine. I was like, are you sure? Um, you know, why wouldn't it count if my husband covered orthodox? This makes no sense. And they're like, no, that's what he said. I was like, okay, fine. So we went through the process. Um, so basically what that consisted of was we talked on the phone um, and then we did a psychological evaluation, which was meeting with a psychologist, me and my husband talking about a bunch of stuff, whatever you would think, you know, how do you feel about surrogacy? Why are you doing this? How's your life? Are you stable? Do you, you know, are you happy? Um, what, what would you feel if? you know, Shalom, God forbid that the baby doesn't survive. How do you feel about the parents um, and privacy, um, communicating with the parents, um, you know, keeping in touch with the baby or not keeping in touch with the baby afterwards? How do you feel about, you know, telling everyone else, do you have support? A lot of things like that. Um, and then we did like this, you know, general psychological evaluation, like, are you a normal and stable person? Like, do you have, you know, uh, enough mental health to, to do this? So, and they did this for both me and my husband, making sure that we um, are both on board, which frankly, I find a little bit weird like it's my my body my choice i know it's gonna be ironic given what i said earlier but like um you know i'm the one doing this like it's not his decision it's mine anyway so whatever um so i did that we did the medical evaluation which was i don't even remember what it was I sent them my records of like my last checkup and blood work and my birth records and i think that was and then i probably had to do like some blood tests and stuff think yeah so I did that anyway it was we were all done we were all up to like the last thing um we had we, d we didn't do a contract yet but they you know the last thing with the to show us the profile and um you know to match us up with a couple oh I forgot major thing they said last minute they're like after all this <laughs> they said well actually there are couples um rabbis came back and they all said that you actually can't do it for them because you're married to someone who converted orthodox it's like yes i told you that <laughs> but anywho whatever miscommunication i guess so they did have another couple that was jewish but they were not going to send their kid to a jewish school i didn't care if they were orthodox or not i just wanted them to send their kid to a jewish school um that was important to me i felt that if i'm going to be helping bring a child into this world a jewish child i want them to have a jewish education and have a jewish religious life so you know there are plenty of other people out there who can um help bring babies into the world and i want to just do it for a jewish family um and do that so anyway so i reluctantly said i'm so sorry i can't do this for this couple and um they were sad and i'm sad so anyway and then i went back to the first agency and i said hey do you happen to have a jewish couple now and guess what they had a jewish couple that was observant and um definitely going to send their kids to a jewish school and it was just timing right as my grandmother says, Bobby, know me, she says, everything in the right time from her friend, Rachel. So everything happens in the right time. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I started, I had to do everything again <laughs> for the second agency. So we did, you know, um, I gave them my medical records, um, I guess updated blood work maybe, and another psychological evaluation. And um, we met the parents over Zoom and that was nice. Um, I can't tell you about the parents, so obviously to preserve their privacy, but um, I'm very happy and I, I, I'm I very happy and happy that we could do this for them. So I guess this leads to the general thing of like, why am I doing this? Again, the answer is like so straightforward and simple. Um, someone needs it and I could do it. And that's that. Um, I had very easy pregnancies. I, you know, my daughter is now 11. So the only symptom I had with her for three months, I was very grossed out by food and I didn't want to eat anything. I lost like 25 pounds because I thought food was disgusting. I was like, ew, ew. I finally understood picky people and I dry heaved once and I was tired. That was it. And the second pregnancy, I didn't even know I was pregnant until like two months in. Um, I was just tired. 
that's it and also dry heave once so you know pregnancy was super easy for me it didn't bother me um or didn't bother me much and i love giving birth giving birth is fantastic it's one of the highlights of my life along with donating to the kidney you're on such a high afterwards and you've done something so amazing like you bring a baby a person into this world it's like such an amazing experience um I guess another thing is that um, I give birth at home with midwives, so I'm slightly, slightly crunchy. <laughs> so um, I obviously like I, I knew that that wasn't going to be an option. I figure, you know, these parents are paying lots of money for their baby. They want to make sure that everything is as safe and secure as possible. Um, but thank God we were able to come to. I think I put this on a separate video. Um, I did find a place that is a birth center that's attached to a hospital. So God willing, it's the best of, the best of both worlds. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I'm gonna um, be making videos throughout the process. I have other stuff to talk about. Oh, what else do I have to say? Um, there was a medical examination for um, check my endometrium, I think that was done at the fertility clinic. So that was the only thing I had to like go somewhere and do that. Um, what else was special? I have stuff to say about that, but I probably shouldn't say it on a public YouTube video because whatever I should probably keep my sense of humor myself anyway there was that and then um <laughs> what else you can message me I'll tell you the joke um what else oh yeah because I donated the kidney um the clinic wanted me to talk to a um maternal fetal specialist to see um you know if I had any higher risks which before I donated the kidney my mother was like you have to check if you can still get pregnant afterwards <laughs> even though I told her like I don't want more kids but um you know, so I obviously had had done, you know, asked then, and the maternal fetal specialist just confirmed that yeah, there's a slightly higher risk of gestational diabetes and preeclampsia and um, high blood pressure, I think. So yeah, I should just take some aspirin and have a blood cuff and keep my blood pressure measured. Um, so how do I feel? I'm super excited. Um, you'll see through other videos where I'm up to, but I'm like mad excited to get this started and have a baby. Um, my friends are all very excited to see how I will go uh, be affected by the hormones because I, I, I told him I wasn't hormonal at all. And they're like, yeah, right. They don't believe me. They don't believe my husband. So they had terrible pregnancies and they were not happy and they kind of want to inflict the same pain on me, which is not very nice, right? Anyway, so <laughs> they're looking forward and, you know, they're waiting with popcorn ready for this, which is super fun. Anyway, that's that. Um, more to come. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the contract. Ta -da! It's in this folder. Um, okay, so obviously when you are dealing with something as life-changing and potentially life-changing life -changing or life-ending as a surrogacy, you want to make sure that you have protections in place both for the parents and the, the gestational carrier. So the contract basically goes through obligations, rights, protections, and it has kind of like every case scenario of what will happen and what will we do if this happens or if that happens. Um, if you're the type of person who gets intimidated by that stuff, be warned, I happen not to be. So, you know, um, basically the agency sent over a draft, they, they pay for a lawyer um, for you to consult with. So they send, send over a draft to the lawyer, the lawyer reviewed it with me. I read the contract before, it was like 47 pages. I'm totally comfortable with reading a contract. I made some notes <clears throat> about things I wanted to discuss, discussed with the lawyer, asked some questions. We made some revisions, sent it back to the agency. They sent it back, I think we sent back one revision and, and that was that. <clears throat> um, the, there was the one thing that like maybe it was, took a little bit of time was choosing um, a place to give birth at because I wanted to give, I had my previous children, I had given birth with um, home births with midwives and I knew that, um, you know, most intended parents probably wouldn't want that to happen because they're paying a blank ton of money to have this baby and they want to make sure everything is as secure as possible. But I was lucky enough to find a place that um, has a birth center attached to a hospital with a NICU. So God willing, we will be doing that. And um, I'm really looking forward because I love giving birth. <laughs> People think I'm crazy, but whatever. Giving birth is amazing. So um, what else can I say about the contract? Um, we had to get it notarized. A community member did it because my husband and I both get back from work very late. So like going to the UPS or a bank was not really an option. So luckily we have a community member who did it. It was really sweet because we got to tell them about it at the same time. So that was nice. 
Um, I scanned it at my work. I actually had one, one thing that I needed a witness for and I had forgotten to get the notary to do it or something. So I was like, I just turned to my coworker. I was like, hey, blank random coworker in my very from company. Um, can you be my witness for my surrogacy contract? <laughs> for like an element of it. I think it was like the healthcare HIPAA, you know, medical sharing form. And she was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> So that was fun. Um, I also did um, a bunch of legal documents before, which that that is here, my last will and testament. Um, I did a will, I did a healthcare directive, and I did a living will. Um, I did a power of attorney, also for both me and my husband, which obviously we should have had before, but we didn't. But anyway, the um, agency makes sure that you have it or asks that you have it um, because obviously it's important. So, you know, um, just a general thought about the contract. Um, I'm again not scared off by um, details being in there you know obviously when you do something like this you you accept responsibilities upon yourself so you know you have to be healthy and safe make good decisions um, and then if you make bad decisions there are consequences like welcome to life um, yeah what else um, there was something I wanted to say but I totally forgot all right well that's it for now all right, so I just got off the phone with the fertility clinic um, because they just received the signed contract. Woohoo! So we can now go on to the next stage. Now, unfortunately, I was what they call in Yiddish an Eibelchuchem, and I assumed without asking. So I knew that we would have to start the shots and at some point, right? And I assumed in my puny little brain that I should be off my birth control for that. So I just went off it recently because I figured it would start soon. So like, let me just get it out in advance. Now, apparently that was not the right move because if I had stayed on it, I could have just taken out the ring and then got my period and then started with the lining check, the something. The something and, and then the lining check. Sorry, I, she literally just told me now and I already forgot. So uh, now I just have to wait to my next period. So if this is TMI for you, maybe you shouldn't be watching this video, but but there's that. So I'm a little bit, it's a slightly annoying on a scale of one to 10, a 0.5 because I've just been waiting for this for a while and I feel like I wanted to get it done already. So now we just have to wait. So who's excited to wait for the period? Yay! <laughs> Here I am. Leaving at 6.30 a.m. I was supposed to be there a half hour ago. I am going to the clinic to get my base ultraline, oh, ultraline, tired, base ultrasound lining, um, which is going to be the thing that I do to check my regular lining and see what it's like at a normal basis. And then I'm gonna start taking injections and then we can do the second ultrasound lining check. And then we can do the implantation, which is so exciting. Anyway, um, I have to drive to the clinic now and it is early, um, but that is what you do when you try to not miss work. <laughs> All right, y'all. So at the risk of looking a little weird, recording myself in public with tons of people walking by, um, I just finished with the fertility clinic, which is actually not the fertility clinic that uh, we'll be doing the transfer at. As you can tell, the beautiful city skyline is behind me. It was it's a Jersey city and little did I know, which I love Jersey city. So um, when we we're choosing a location to do the ultrasound. I was like, okay, Jersey City. And I didn't realize it would be right by the water, which is stunning. I happen to love this place. So an extra bonus to wake up early, totally worth it. Um, it was super fast. We just did an ultrasound really, really fast. And it blood work, it was just one tube. Um, it was to check if I'm pregnant, which I know I'm not, but, and, um, and hormone levels. And um, yeah, it was the fastest one I've ever done. It was zero weight in and out, beautiful office. So I'm very excited. Um, medication begins next. I can think they get the results today. And then we'll begin the injections. And, <laughs> and then yeah, the implantation is so exciting. Oh yeah, and I also asked, I like to talk to people while, you know, while they're uh, sticking their fingers in my private parts. And I asked the um, doctor, someone, um, a bunch of questions which made me feel sound like though I don't know anything about biology which is 100% true <laughs> so um to my dear friend Efra yes I do read that stuff and then I promptly forget it because I guess I don't care about it all right see you later all right guys <laughs> hey lights camera action <laughs> all right I have called you here ship show leave it on first of all tell me your names and ages I'm Sophia, and I'm <laughs> 22. Okay, that, that's all the truth. 
Okay, I'm Emily and I. Yeah, say what your real name is, or I'm gonna say it. I'm Chava and I'm 11. Okay, and you? I'm Jacob and I'm 32. <laughs> okay, well, I'm Mindy and I'm 33. New, really. I'm Shimshon and I'm 10,000. Okay, you're 10. Great, okay, I would like you to open that up. This year package. Wait, give it to me. And guess what it is? Wow, Havalaya, you know we have a pair of scissors. Scissors are boring. <laughs> it says open from here. Oh. Wow, genius. Wait, let me do this hand. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. Do we get the board way? <laughs> let me show you how professional it is. <laughs> Havalaya, stop, it's so gross. <laughs> control? No, I'll read it. Oh, it's for the, um, it's called surrogacy. That's right. <laughs> you guessed it. What is this, guys? Look at it. Is it a blood test? No. Is this a needle? <laughs> they thought they were going to have a present. That's a, what do you think we have to do with this? Force you to eat all the medication. Not eat it. I don't have to eat it. What do you think I have to do with it? Shove it in your butt. <laughs> That's right. Very, very dignified, Layla. <laughs> All right, Layla and Shimshon, I have questions. How do you feel about what is surrogacy? First of all, Shimshon, put the light back on. It's Shim. putting lights on and off as a professional job. No, Shimshon, come back. Turn the light off so I can make my escape. Okay, what's surrogacy? Very good. All right. And what do you think about that? I think. Shim, put Shim the, light the light on. This is ridiculous. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, Lele, why don't you tell me? <laughs> I think it sucks because you have to take your blood draw every day or something. No. It's, okay, Shim, put it on. Okay, don't press it again. Now, as punishment, you have to tell me. <laughs> I, I did it. I did. Stop it! <laughs> okay, Shimshon, tell me, what do you think about surrogacy? Are you excited? Really? Why? Rude. So, what do you. What, Shimshon, tell me. I could be rude. Like, no, you can't be rude. Can I be rude in this? No. I don't want you to be sure, you see, because yeah. then you'll get fatter than you already are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is terrible. Really? You really want to show your, your horrible sense of humor to the whole world, Shimshon? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that there was going to be a picture of Tora in there. <laughs> no. Okay, so Khalil, what do you think about surrogacy? I think... Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a girl! <laughs> oh, we don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, are you excited? Sure. Sure? What do you think it's going to be like? I think Tati's gonna have to give you a foot massage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what else? <laughs> and I also think that I'm slight. Oh my gosh, half of my hair. I'm imaginary hair flip because my hair's tied up. <laughs> Alright, um, are you excited? Are you, gonna be yeah. fun? you think it's gonna be fun to have Where a... are you posting this? Everywhere I can. <laughs> 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 Alright, have any more thoughts? Any more things to say? I have a brain. You have a brain? That's nice yeah. to know. <laughs> All right, say bye. Bye. So, does this look fun to you? It does not look fun to me. Okay, y'all. How was it? I just took a giant needle. <laughs> My wife's took it. That's real rude. Why you, what's with you? Teach the kids to be crude. It's terrible. That's for me. Okay. <laughs> it's weird, but, um, you know, it's not that hard at all. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. We'll see yeah. how I feel you after. You didn't even flinch. I? <laughs> all right, well, that was yeah, that was it. Didn't hurt. It didn't hurt at all. Um, I mean, it was a little stick, you know, a little stick going in you. Well, it wasn't bad. Uh, apparently, if you do in the right place, you're not with a dead sword. Okay. So we'll see. Do you hold Yeah, I know. I could tell. <laughs> well, I finished the second monitoring um, to check again the um, uterus and blood work after I've been taking estrogen. So I'll. Hopefully all is well, and hopefully if things are good, the transfer will be in approximately two weeks. Yes. 
Well, it's middle of the night because that's how I roll and I am not excited about having to take the progesterone. So today's my first day slash night of starting this lovely progesterone, which I'm told is not gonna be happy, but whatever. And look, now I have to take a whole milliliter and it's a much bigger needle. Well, previous needle was this, so smaller and compared to this. Whatever, I should stop being a big whiny baby and just do it. I'll let you know how it goes. If I can feel myself doing this. Nope. Uh, open it up, put the needle in the thingamajibadoodle, otherwise known as the bottle. Now I have to pull this down, which I am doing with my teeth. Okay, I just pulled it down and I have to let it fill up. Whatever, I can't really do this. <laughs> Folks, well, I did it. This hair little needle went right in me. Um, I will admit I was actually a little nervous. <laughs> okay, I was, uh, you know, somewhat scared, which I usually am not. So um, I, what's called, I looked up the video that the nurse from the fertility clinic had sent me about um, how to, like where to insert it. I was like, okay, if I'm gonna put this big needle in me, I wanna make sure I'm doing it in the right place. So I like double checked about like the location where it would be painless. And I will say, you know, I had to like bend over backwards because my dear husband is sleeping, of course. So I have to like, bend over backwards to like watch it. And um, you know, the first poke was a poke. Well, honestly, then once it, I just pushed it in and it was not painful, so. So that was good. Our cushion was like the same thing as the smaller one, just, just bigger. Oh, yes. Um, I also took my second recent blood work today. Um, both Yoel and I have to got blood work done. I don't even remember. I mean, we've had blood work done before, like a couple months ago, sometime in life. And then we had it done recently. And then we had, now I, and then we have to do it again right before the injection, which is, uh, sorry, the um, implantation, which is next week. I don't even remember anymore, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was three times. So yes, I went to do it today. I did it right near my work in Lakewood, um, in the lab court, and it was actually really easy. I was the only person there. Usually when we go to the lab court where we live, there's like a billion people there and we have to wait. So that was nice. And Yoel is going to do this tomorrow, locally. All right, well, here we are, if you can't tell, in New York City. Just got off the station. I'm gonna walk to the clinic. Decided I need some exercise and walk an hour. Today is the day. It is transfer day. Very exciting. You probably can't handle it well, so I won't talk much about it, but yes. All right, well, exciting things. The baby is in. <laughs> um, I know some people like to say embryo. I like to say baby, because that's how I am. But it was amazing. It was very nice. We went to the clinic and uh, I was very surprised because it turns out the family was there too, the parents. So I got to meet them and talk with them and yes, they were in the room with me from behind when we transferred baby. But basically it just, you know, got into a row. Um, they told me to come with a semi-full bladder and I apparently always think I have to go to the bathroom so I always think there's something in my bladder but there really wasn't. So I had to drink like eight bottles of water, mini bottles of water. So it was like four bottles of water and uh, wait for the water to go down into the bladder because apparently it makes it easier to uterine lining or something rather. As you see, I'm not very good at the details. But yeah, I mean, it's a really simple procedure. You just stick a scapula in and then you put a catheter in with a little teeny embryo. First they did a trial run just to put a catheter in. It's just a tiny, like a little stick of plastic. Don't even feel it. And then it just put the, the embryo was on a petri dish. They sucked the embryo out and you know put it in the catheter with a little, little clear plastic tube and then put the uh, catheter in me, and then whoop, put a little push bubble of air to push the, the embryo out. And that was that, and the baby has landed. And um, yeah, I sat there in the room for a couple minutes, just to make sure the baby is comfortable, not to kick the baby out. And um, yeah, and then the parents and I went out for pizza. So, and we talked for like a good couple of hours. Um, beautiful New York ambiance, but Anyway, um, I'm very, very happy. The parents are happy. It was so nice to talk to them and to get to know them. And really, you know, just talked about, um, you know, 
the process, the surrogacy, a bunch of stuff related to that, and also just just stop chit chat. Um, but I'm very grateful, and I'm really davening, praying that this you know will be successful. It's 70% success rate in the first implantation, so I am really hoping that it just the baby takes. Next week we have a pregnancy test. Um, yeah, I mean. I just have to take it easy, which I'm like, yeah, I'll take it easy. I have no problem taking it easy. Um, so, yeah, it should just go well and be healthy and come with a beautiful, full-term, healthy baby for the parents to take home. So, I just want to share, Baruch Hashem, thank God, there was awesome news. I went and took some blood work this morning, got the ambulances there, and guess what? Tested the pregnancy level, hormone levels, and Baruch Hashem, I am pregnant. The baby's stuck, so so relieved because there was a 70% chance that it would work, and there's always the 30%. Thank God, Baruch Hashem, it is sticking around. It should just be healthy and stay and have no problems till a healthy birth and a healthy life, etc., 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 all good things. So that's amazing news, and actually, it was also good news, which is not at all relevant, but. Um, was just something interesting was that last week when we I was at the clinic and I was talking about how the shots are getting a little painful um I basically mentioned that like the bigger shots are more painful and she's like what do you mean bigger need bigger shots and I said yeah you know the one with the, the big needle and she was like um you're supposed to be just withdrawing the oil with the needle but then you switch to the smaller needle I was like oh I'm pretty sure I did watch that in the video but totally forgot about it so I had been injecting myself with the larger needle for no reason at all so it's it's better with a smaller needle still still painful but better um oh yeah and I forgot I kind of forgot that I have to do the injections through like 11 weeks of pregnancy which I was like kind of expecting it to be through pregnancy so I was like oops <laughs> it's gonna last a lot longer than I wanted than I thought it would be but once again this is what happens when you forget what you read as soon as you read it all right, so sorry for the bad sound quality. It's gonna be noisy, but um, I just left the clinic. We had our first ultrasound, I guess, um, once the embryo was implanted, and there was a bit of a scare because this tray started bleeding a little bit, um, just like some blood and two little clumps. And you know, I'm, both of us were much more nervous now than we, let's say, than we were with our pregnancy. And I called the parents right away in the clinic. So I was going to go in next week for the um, ultrasound, but they said come in tomorrow. So I am. Um, I went in and thank God, Baruch Hashem, there was a heartbeat. Everything was felt and fine. The sac and the embryo were just the right size. So everything's great. So I'm very relieved about that. So, whew. All right, so we just have the second ultrasound. And the parents were there, which is very nice. It's always lovely to see them. Um, and the baby's seven weeks old now. So we got to see the very large head at the back but um, leg, we got to see the placenta, everything's growing nicely, everything's great, so Barfasham, we're happy, thank God, let it just keep growing and be healthy. Um, I'm definitely starting to feel pregnant, I am very tired, so uh, wake up with energy and then I'm like, oh, I gotta, gotta go back to sleep, <laughs> so uh, definitely like just randomly tired throughout the day, but Barfasham, all for a good cause, I'm so happy the baby's growing and let it just keep growing. All right, so we just had our first um, visit with the midwives with the midwifery center and we first did the ultrasound the parents were here as well which is very nice we did the ultrasound and I'm now at 11 weeks six days so no no, no 10 weeks 10 weeks six days um, and the ultrasound came out very nice the baby is bigger we can see you know a nice head belly arms legs it looks very nice um, we got to hear the heart again heart is currently like mid baby which is interesting it's a middle at this point and um, then we had our first visit with the birthing center, um, which was very nice. We got a tour. We got to see the birthing rooms. I'm super excited. They're beautiful. They have a big bed. They have a big, you know, jacuzzi where you can labor. They have a shower. Um, they look very, very nice. And I'm very excited that we can give birth in the birthing center, God willing. Um, and then we met with the midwife, um, answered questions. You know, the parents had more questions because, you know, they've never had a baby before. So um, it's all new to them. So I do feel like because I had my kids before, I already am more familiar with what's gonna happen and, you know, not particularly, uh, not anxious, you know. But, you know, there's some decisions that they'll have to make about which test, if they want, you know, any invasive test or not. So um, it's up to them and it's their thing. So, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. It was nice. 
Um, it was very nice. We, the midwife is very lovely and the people are lovely. Um, it looks great. And you know, it was interesting because they had to, this is the second time that they're having a surrogacy birth. So it was just, you know, some, a little bit more paperwork and make sure that they have the right insurance and the baby will be registered to the parents and, you know, make sure the birth certificate is filled out correctly. So just stuff like that, but, you know, low key bureaucracy, nothing major. Um, and yeah, everything's going well. Um, I feel great. Um, I was tired. I'm, I'm feeling not tired now, so that's good. And um, I only had two days where I felt a little bit like, what's it called? Um, grossed out by food, so I wasn't eating much. I had no energy, so that was not fun. But really, I can't complain. It's been, it's been going great. I don't remember I'm pregnant most of the time. You know, it's just a regular experience. So I'm very happy, and we scheduled our next ultrasound and for two, three weeks, and then the next visit for four weeks. And very exciting. Okay, everyone. I um, saw a lot of people on <laughs> Instagram or the internet make like their needles look all pretty in this beautiful formation. So I did not have patience to do that. Um, I just put it on my very beat up kitchen table, which has a lot of paint projects on it. But I did line them up um, and encountered them. Gosh, I forgot already what the number was. I think it was like 65 progesterone shots and um, 26 estrogen shots. I probably missed like a day or two. But basically, yeah, um, estrogen was twice a week and progesterone was every day. So it was about like two months. And um, you can see this is the batch of needles where I used the, what was the gauge? A higher gauge needle that I wasn't supposed to use. I don't know, I had to get it from the package because I have leftover. But anyway, um, so yeah, so this is all that, I actually finished this a while ago and I forgot to make a video updating saying like, hey, I'm done with the shots. But I was so happy that I'm done with the shots because that's honestly like the only part that was really like not pleasant. Um, so, and I also like took these needles around with me like whenever I went on a trip. So it was a little bit like I felt like a junkie and I was like, oh, don't look at my suitcase or my backpack because I don't take two suitcases. Um, and then also like I just had them in the hallway in my house next to my bedroom. So if anyone came up, they're like, what the heck is going on? But whatever, too bad on them. <laughs> okay, goodbye. I'm so excited to throw them all in the garbage. Hi, so I wanted to update you. Um, I'm now at 20 weeks, and I guess before I start, it's gonna be a little bit harder to be enthusiastic because of what just happened in Israel. So um, forgive me if I am not very excited or happy appearing. But anyway, um, good news. Uh, I'm now at 20 weeks, and everything's going great. I uh, started to get a little bit of a belly. Uh, yesterday we did our 20 week ultrasound, which went very well. Everything's doing great. The baby is great. Baruch Hashem, thank God. Um, we also visited Midwife yesterday. Um, and then today I went to the maternal fetal specialist again, which was something I had done before uh, because I donated the kidney. They just wanted to discuss with me um, more thoroughly, you know, various risk factors, which is, you know, a little bit of my family history. Um, and then, you know, just general health stuff and the uh, kidney. So nothing major, everything should be fine. It's just like precaution, uh, make sure that they know me and um, that I'm in their system. So that's the update, everything's good. I'm not really tired anymore. Like I said, baby belly is growing a little. Um, everything's great. So um, let's hope for the best in Israel, but pregnancy is going well. So um, we just had our 25 week appointment. Um, we had it at the midwife, so we were supposed to have a fetal echocardiogram as well, but um, probably since I was late to the first appointment, we um, missed this second one. So we have to come back tomorrow. Man, Kulpa. Um, update about the pregnancy. Um, definitely feel pregnant now, more than 10 years ago, or whatever, 11 and 12 years ago. Um, the baby is squishing my organs, stretching my stomach, shortening my breath, things like that. 
So it's kind of like always mild discomfort. Um, pain like once. So I'm definitely clutching a little bit. So, <laughs> you know, it's not as painless as I thought it would be, but still obviously relatively, you know, mild um, on the scale of possibilities. So I'm grateful for that and excited. Definitely growing. You can pretty much tell I'm pregnant now, I think, if I'm, you know, wearing anything that has any sort of shape at all, you can see. So it's cool. Very cool. Baby moves a lot now. A lot. Hello. So we just had um, the visit to the fetal, uh, for the fetal echo, which is currently done for IVF babies. And everything's good. Baruch Hashem. Um, we have to come again today because I came out yesterday. So we have to come in today. So my fault for that. Uh, but it was very nice. Baruch Hashem. Everything's good. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing yesterday that another pregnancy symptom I've been having is acid reflux, um, which is annoying, but thankfully I discovered this amazing thing called Tums and it works and it helps. I did not have acid reflux for the first pregnancy or generally ever. Um, so it's kind of interesting, <laughs> but yeah, thankfully it's hasn't had it much in the past week. Um, but Tums are good, they taste delicious, so yay. Oh, I forgot again. The, we're able to do a 3D um, what's it called? A 3D ultrasound and the baby is adorable and it's so cute and it's really amazing what you can see with the 3D, you know, uh, ultrasound. So adorable, very cute, squishy, you know, like babies should be. So, so fun. Um, we just had another ultrasound appointment. Um, I'm gonna be at 30 weeks this week in two days. Uh, we got to do a 3D ultrasound and I was very impressed at the baby's athletic abilities. The baby's foot is right up by the face and the hand was backward, like, you know, all the way up. So babies are quite limber. It's very cool to see. Um, parents were very nice. They got us donuts. So I will share that with the kids. Very exciting. Um, how's the pregnancy progressing? Same. Going bigger. Yes. It's a gouge to like show your belly. Here's the belly. Whatever. Side view so you see it more. <laughs> but it's definitely there. Um, I guess, yeah, at this point, you know, people start noticing. So I started telling, you know, more people like in shul, um, synagogue. And, you know, they were like, wow, that's so cool. They're all very, you know, I think it's very amazing. And they sometimes, you know, ask questions like, what made you decide to do it? And how do you feel? Um, mainly a lot of people basically it's like what you'd expect everyone asks, like, how do you feel about giving up the baby? I'm like, it's not my baby. And I'm very happy to give up the baby. I don't want a baby. Um, I'm so excited that someone else is going to take care of this creature who is <laughs> very demanding and needs a lot of time and attention. Like, so excited. Not my problem. <laughs> so I'm so happy to be able to do this for people. I'm happy that um, you know I can help other people have it, but like I had mine and I'm not interested in going back to that. So I'm so happy to, you know, hand over the baby at the end of this. Um so but it's very exciting. Um grow bigger, um a little more squishy, you know, harder to go up and down. The other week I was sitting on the couch wrapping presents for Hanukkah. The kids were playing dreidel um, on the floor and it was my turn and I was like, sorry, I'm not getting up. I'm spinning the dreidel from the couch, so deal with it. Um, I went up for a walk with my mother for like an hour and a half but not the other Shabbos and I was like, oh my gosh, this was not such a great idea because I need a bathroom and there was no bathroom, you know, on our walk, so it was a little uncomfortable. Um, you know, another long walk yesterday, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom all the time and I really don't really have to go to the bathroom, I just feel like it. So whatever, but that's life. It's very exciting. Um, Baruch Hashem, thank God the baby's healthy and that's all we can ask for and it should just be this way, you know, for the rest of the baby's life. All right, bye. Hello. So, um, we just had our 36 week appointment, four weeks away. Very cool, very exciting that we got to this moment. Um, 
everything's going well. The usual, you know, baby moves. Um, I'm getting bigger, visibly pregnant, I guess. Told a couple more people at Shul. They're like, oh, that's cool. But I, these days I can't remember if I told people or I didn't tell people. So I'm like, did I tell you? Did I tell you? Like what? Um, anyway, thinking of putting a little announcement on our Shul WhatsApp, starting off with a joke. Okay, y'all, so y'all realize by now that I'm pregnant. Just wanted to let you know, baby's not your wells. You know, that's not mine either. So um, that's the old joke that he likes saying. So haven't done that yet. Maybe I should do it today. Um, appointment went well. We just did a non-stress test because it's an IVF baby. Um, Hashem, everything's great. And um, actually, parents just gave me the cord blood, cord bank blood thing to collect. Um, just in case like they don't make it, you know, the baby's born really fast or something and they can't make it to the hospital, um, the birth center on time. So I have it. Um, and also a colostrum collector. We're going to try that out later. Try to collect some colostrum. Um, so that's pretty cool. Never did that before. Um, yeah, exciting. Excited. You know, I'm, I'm very grateful that we're here at this moment. I'm grateful that the baby is healthy. Um, you know, I'm just really grateful that I get to do this. All right, that's that. I guess something else I can show you is I already packed the hospital bag. Um, it is missing pads, but whatever, I'll put those later. But a towel just in case, sports bra, some hats, assuming it's winter, socks. I got, um, a red dress to give birth in. <laughs> Um, because you know red duh and then a blue dress to wear afterwards and they're both like t-shirt dresses they're very um and then there's like underwear or stuff in here um and some toiletries like toilet toothbrush deodorant stuff like that somewhere else there um i'm bringing this envelope dress because you know i'll be giving birth with the parents in the room and i want to stay modest but you know have access so it's a big t-shirt dress and that should hopefully fulfill both requirements all right and then yeah i gotta add some pads here all right so we are now at 38 weeks um, just finished another appointment. It's an unusually warm day for winter, but yeah, very exciting. Um, any updates? Baruch Hashem. Thankfully things are, are well. We, um, the last month, right? So last two weeks and then today and the next two weeks, we've been having weekly appointments. So that's fun. And at every appointment we do an ultrasound because it's an IVF baby and, you know, a regular midwife check. So that is nice, cute. Get to see the baby developing. We see the 3D images. Um, I did talk to the parents today about, you know, how I kind of like with my, my kids, I basically like labor by myself. You know, I was doing um, not for my first, but for my second, I did hypnobirthing. So I was really just walking around my house, you know, breathing and visualizing myself on this beautiful tropical island. I like didn't, wasn't really, you know, didn't want to socialize. So I just wanted to tell the parents and the midwives, you know, that I kind of like wanted to be by myself for the, you know, contractions part until pushing. And they were like totally fine with that. So it was just good. Um, definitely when I'm with people, I feel the need to socialize. You know, I'm usually the one to like fill up. I don't like when it's quiet. I like to talk. Um, so, you know, I kind of felt that social obligation. So I was like, okay, maybe, you know, you're going to want to have your time to focus and focus on, you know, focus on not focusing on the contractions, right? Focus on imagining yourself in this beautiful place. Um, and I do that by the way, quite a lot. Um, interestingly, I take my blood pressure every day for, um, for this pregnancy. And typically the first time, especially if I do it during the day when I'm still like in the middle of working, um, typically the first time it's gonna be a little higher and then I'm like, okay, but they, and I do my visualization, my breathing. And then the next time it's like significantly lower. So, um, yeah, it works. All right, well, very exciting. Um, my hospital bag's packed. Um, 
I have to actually make arrangements for who's gonna probably ask my mother to take my kids to school and ask my friend to take them back afterwards for those days that I will be out of commission. Um, yeah, very exciting. All right, hi, so sitting in the car. Um, we just had our 40 week appointment. Today is the day. <laughs> okay, so obviously like, it's a day, right? So far there's no baby. I mean, there's a baby, it's right here. But there, the baby is staying inside. Um, yeah, um, very exciting, it's exciting, that's all. You know, excited to be the baby, excited to hand over the baby, excited for the parents. Um, what else? What else has been new? I started collecting colostrum. That has been a pain. I say pain in the neck. I was gonna make a joke about pain in the breast, but it's actually not painful. It's just annoying. So tiny, tiny, tiny amount, you know, to come out and you have to like collect it and try it, not let it escape anywhere. I was using this like plastic thing and then I used a syringe and it's just tedious. Um, but as it has been described as liquid gold, so hopefully the liquid gold is useful for the baby. <laughs> so it's in the freezer, the like two tiny drops that have been collected and uh, we'll keep trying to collect more. Um, what else? Baby dropped. I definitely feel the baby drop and the midwife felt the baby drop. Um, just feels lower. Uh, I had cramps for like a few minutes, twice. That's it. So that was it. Um, what else? The midwife that we just spoke to now was really reassuring and talked about, oh, don't worry, you know, everything in it's a due time. And, you know, um, reassuring us that the baby will come when it's ready and, you know, about what our options were um, in case the baby does not come, you know, membrane sweep, um, either, you know, at 41 weeks or 42 weeks, um, induction plan if the baby doesn't come by 42 weeks. Um, you know, what you, how you can start inducing labor down in the midwife department. If that doesn't work, you know, obviously you can always go upstairs to labor and delivery and do pitocin, but um, they have a few different more natural options. Anyway, I don't think it's going to get there. I think the baby will come. It'll come. It'll be great. Anyway, um, what else? Any other thoughts and feelings? I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, bye. Yeah, one other thing that's funny if you have the sense of humor um so yoel will be coming to the the birth god willing hopefully if he you know makes it but um he's like well yeah i only want to come because you know you might die so like you know if you're if you're dying i'm gonna i want to say goodbye so yeah that's kind of both of our thoughts because i don't feel like i need him around i don't know you know i am um, he missed shimshon's birth because i was like oh let's go to work it'll take a while and it did not take that long so he missed the birth by like five minutes because as soon as he got to work i was like oh come back <laughs> um and it was fine i was totally fine i'm very independent i don't need you know people there but like yeah i'm like if in case something happens you know he should be there just in case so you know as much as i'm an optimist and like oh everything's gonna be fine obviously it's most likely be 100 fine but you know you always have to think about it just in case so hopefully everything will be fine bye Hello, y'all. Hello. So, how do you feel now that the due date has passed and was yesterday? Uh, I'm very stressed. <laughs> Why are you I know stressed? I not the right answer, maybe. I'm no, stressed. No, be Whatever. honest. Giving birth is a big thing. I'm stressed for you. Well, I'm hypothetically also stressed for the baby, but, like, <laughs> but I'm also stressed for you. Everything, everything goes well. Okay. Do you, how, how do you think do things will go well? Or? Uh, I think uh, statistically it will be fine. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I have a, a funny question for you. Um, have you, how has this pregnancy been different than the pregnancies with our kids in the sense of your really relating to the baby? Well, who's going to see this video? Anyone, <laughs> the world, the whoever world. wants to. I'm, I'm not uh, emotionally attached to the baby. <laughs> like, it's more like, uh, like, I hope the baby's well, you know, like, like, it's, like it's, uh, think of it as someone else's kid. Which it is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm even uncomfortable touching your belly. Yes. Because I feel like it's intrusive. Which is what I wanted for that, because I think it's hilarious. Anything else I can touch from you, but like your belly, I just don't I feel it's intrusive. It's not my baby. Yes. So so despite our, our, our usual cuddling does not include the belly, which is right, I think right. is hilarious. Yeah, that's right. 
See, I don't know. It's psychological. I don't know. It's not rational. I think it's very cute. You're a very Western man. You're respectful of, you know, people's autonomy, even if they're in the belly of another they're person. They're a baby, right? <laughs> and they're completely oblivious and would not notice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but I think that's very cute. Uh, all right. Are you excited? What other thoughts do you have about I'm the birth? I'm excited. I hope it. I hope it happens uh, not on Shabbos, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I hope to be there. Cool. All right. Any other thoughts? I don't have much thoughts about it. Like it was. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty mundane. The whole thing is yeah, nine months of mundane. You just all that happened was you grew a little bigger and you had to go to doctors. But you know, it wasn't like it was not, on my side. It was not intrusive at all. <laughs> well, and you got nine months of you know yeah, no okay. interruptions. That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye. Uh, So, we are at 41 weeks and in the parking lot of the hospital. <laughs> so, nothing much has happened this week. Um, I had some cramps for like 20 minutes. I think maybe she'll have this on Sunday. Um, and then nothing afterwards. So, um, yeah, I mean, nothing happened, which was interesting. Um, we went to the midwives. They, we had an ultrasound and uh, everything was good, Baruch Hashem. And we went to midwives and we did a membrane sweep, which, you know, I haven't had that with my kids. So that was interesting. It was short, slightly uncomfortable, but whatever. Um, the parents went out of the room for that. So I guess that was, that was not fine. Um, and then we scheduled a whole bunch of stuff in case the baby doesn't come. So first, right now it's Thursday. If the baby doesn't come, then we have on Sunday, we have a um, ultrasound again. And the midwife will come up and do another membrane sweep. Um, if nothing happens by Tuesday night, we will go get a balloon inserted in the labor and delivery department. And hopefully that will work. And if that doesn't work, then Thursday, which is 42 weeks, we'll have like a medical induction, which would be, I guess, Pitocin or whatever. And in that case, we would have to give birth in the labor and delivery department, which I'd rather not. So I'm gonna try to do some like positions to get the baby going, because yeah, I'd rather give birth in the birth center. Quite rather. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that. Um, and interestingly, I guess, I'm not so sure if like psychology plays such a role in it, but um, you know, I was pretty busy at work and I had like a bunch of work deadlines that I wanted to really meet. Uh, last night I, I finished like the big projects that I was like really worried about. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe my psyche was like holding the baby back, like don't cut, don't come out yet. <laughs> I want to finish my work projects. Um, so I'm like now thinking I'm like maybe I should be like okay send brain waves down to the baby come out come out it's time to come out um tomorrow's Friday so um I don't care so much about giving birth on Shabbos but Yoel doesn't want to give birth on Shabbos the parents don't want to give birth on Shabbos so um I suppose giving birth before Shabbos would be preferable <laughs> um especially because we don't plan to stay there for a while um and getting back would be an issue like getting there is fine but like I don't know if we could get back and I don't really necessarily want to hang around there you know longer than necessary um birth center is basically you stay for a few hours after you give birth not long so we shall see bye i realized i should probably explain what a membrane sweep is um you know as the world's foremost expert having experienced it exactly once <laughs> um so basically it's the midwife inserting her fingers into the cervix and like um kind of separating the Sack. I'm very, by the way, I'm terrible at biology. I have like zero interest in it. It's amazingly pathetic. I promise that my lack of knowledge of biology does not reflect my knowledge in other areas of life. But yeah, like inserting her fingers between the sac and the uterine wall. Uterine sac and uterine wall. <laughs> that feels like it's a repetition. But anyway, I like separating it. So like encouraging baby to come out. Okay. All right. Well, that was, you can also Google it. Probably better than me. Oh, here we are. Uh, it is Sunday, so we are at 41 weeks and a couple of days. Um, we just came from the hospital. We went upstairs to the labor and delivery department and had a non-stress test. Everything was great. Baruch Hashem, thank God, the baby looks great. Uh, apparently I had some contractions, I didn't feel them, but so said the monitor. Um, so it was interesting because we got to see you know, the labor and delivery department, which is 
you know, a possibility if I don't give birth by Thursday. So, um, we had another membrane sweep, um, and apparently now I'm two centimeters dilated. On Thursday I was one centimeter dilated, and the baby is lower than before, which uh, aligns with the evidence of getting up like five, six times to go to the bathroom last night. So yes, I definitely feel like the baby is lower. Um, so that's good. Um, it's kind of interesting because I feel, I have to contend with feeling like I'm being a disappointment because I'm like not giving birth and you know, making the parents anxious. Obviously that's like nonsense. Um, you know, I'm one like, oh, is it my fault? Am I like psychologically holding the baby back? Am I sitting too much because I'm working? Am I like not exercising enough? Am I not moving? Um, I did a whole bunch of lunges yesterday on Shabbos and like side lunges for like a good while uh, while talking to friends. And um, I did feel some potential contractions afterwards, um, but they went away. So whatever. I'm wondering like, you know, should I feel like I have to do lunges all day? I just do it like five hours in a row until the baby comes out? Whatever. I think I have too much of this uh, tendency to want to do things and, you know, cross things off a list and be responsible and whatever. But, you know, not everything's in my control, so stay heavy. Um, but it's nice to hear that, you know, the baby's lower and a bunch of centimeters. And obviously, you know, I do think that everything will come in the right time, as my grandmother always says from her friend Rachel, everything in the right time. Um, it's a gorgeous day, by the way, if you notice the sun and the t-shirt. Um, yeah, so seeing the labor and delivery department was, it's nice. It was, you know, not as bad as, as I imagined. It was a, it was an actually delivery room and it was spacious and that was comfortable. Um, did not have a bathtub, which I highly prefer. Um, but it was, you know, soft lighting, nice window. People were very nice. The staff was very cheerful and very sweet. So whatever, listen, it'll be what it'll be. Um, as of now, I don't remember if I said the schedule last time, but if nothing happens, then Tuesday night, we have uh, a balloon to be inserted. 12 hours later, we come back to get Wednesday morning to get it removed. Um, can do another membrane sweep then, and possibly like the broader on Wednesday morning. Um, in which case I would have to, because I was RSV positive, I would have to get antibiotics every four hours, which you know, will be a task since I don't like live right here. So either stick around or go back and forth, whatever. Um, and then if nothing happens on Thursday, we have to give birth in the labor and delivery department. Um, and then, you know, either have like a certain pill or that Pitocin, but whatever. Um, so listen, it'll be what it'll be. And, and that's that. Okay, right, bye. It's kind of cool, you know, you write when a contraction starts and stops and how intense it is. Not 100% accurate, like, towards the end when I got up, I didn't really keep track of it anymore. And then I went into the car and I got, kept track of it again. Like, this 19 minutes is when I called the Uber, I guess. But yeah, it's coming every few minutes here. <laughs> um, obviously, this is now. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm alive. Yay! I didn't die. <laughs> so, for our question. Um, listen things happen right apparently I lost a lot of blood so um, yeah a lot of blood came out I passed out while I was sitting in the bathtub I was apparently I was eating a date bar and I passed out and it fell in the water I didn't even realize and then they called a bunch of people in and we all panicked and then I got shots to make my blood coagulate and um, uh, stuff. I moved to a stretcher, went to the OR, where they, um, I don't know, tried to give me anesthesia, but I threw up all the Gatorade that I had drank. And then what else happened in the OR? I think they scraped out anything that was left of the placenta and checked to see if I was bleeding anywhere <laughs> internally. Um, they sewed up, like, a, I had a little stitch, one, one tear of my or whatever, lavia and something, whatever. So they sewed that up. Um, put in a catheter. Swapped out the catheter now. Um, and then stuck, stuck in the needles more to test the blood. My blood type, even though I know my blood type and they took blood before. Um, but because they're going to get blood because I lost blood. So I'm going to get some, someone else's blood. Yay. Yay, blood. Okay. And that's that. That's so that. thank you all. Bye. 
All right, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> it feels so like ludicrously self-centered to like make these vlogs, but anyway, um, here I am at the hospital. Um, this is a birth yesterday. Figured could hear a brief recap of the birth. Um, I know women always love to talk about their birth stories because birth is amazing and it's one of the most um, fundamental experiences that a woman can go through. So this is not any different than any other birth story really. Um, but anyway, birth story. So we, um, I was actually shopping at, <laughs> for Shalfmanos and I felt the first proper contraction that actually felt like a stomach contraction because I'd had cramps like in the week and a half before. Um, oh, let me preface this by saying that Monday, which was the day before I gave birth, I actually had a super down day um, and I think it was like hormones um, where I felt like just completely... Oh, hold on. Sorry, there was a nurse coming, attack coming to take my vitals. Um, and as you see, I found my earrings. <laughs> I finally got my jewelry back on. Um, I had wanted to actually give birth with jewelry because I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to give birth in jewelry? But then as I was actually laboring, I was like, you know, I feel more comfortable being like natural without it. Anyway, so yeah, Monday before, today's Wednesday, I gave birth Tuesday. Monday before the delivery, I, um, was feeling really not good and I know emotionally I had been you know I had mentioned this before feeling like oh it's my fault that the baby's not born yet um and I feel so guilty I feel like I'm making people anxious which was absolutely irrational and Monday like it just it really was emotionally down and just depressed for I really I could tell like, I knew it was no reason my friends were like okay it's probably pre-birth hormones which makes sense because at this point in my you know adult life I'm mature enough to recognize that sometimes you just wake up and you just feel bad and there's literally no reason like I mean there must be like, like a biochemical reason but there's no rational reason and there's nothing like it's not like you have to actually make any changes in your life it's not like usually when you feel bad you're like okay what can I do to fix it like what is wrong with my life that I need to address but um sometimes it's just biochemical and again I'm the last person to talk about these things <laughs> but um you know sometimes you just know it's just a mood and you wake up and there's nothing you do about it and you just have to like go through it so you know one day I was like I actually took the day off of work which is extremely rare for me to take off for like feeling bad um I normally don't do that at all but um I did and I just stayed in bed and basically read a book all day <laughs> um and anyway and then um but I knew it was like no no reason wait a second it's monday yeah it was monday so i gave birth that so the start of that night okay yeah that makes sense so tuesday morning the baby was born right okay so anyway monday after i picked the kids up from school i went um to uh go shop on a shopping and as i was in the grocery i uh, felt my first like legit con like contraction that felt like in the uterus area rather than the, the pelvic area which is like cramps um, and I was like, okay, great, promising. Um, then I guess it developed very slowly over the next couple hours, maybe like first like 20, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, kind of like, you know, whatever. Um, something like that. Um, went back home and, you know, just unpacked and did, you know, regular random things. Um, and then I think by that point already, like I felt like it hadn't gone away. So I knew it was like there to stay. And, um, Sorry, I'm taking so long. My brain may not be fully there. Um, then by, let's say, I think 11.30ish, I was in bed. I was I collected the colostrum for the last time, and it definitely flowed a lot easier. Like, there was a lot more of it. Um, so that was also, like, very clearly, I guess, a sign of labor. Um, and then I was like, yeah, let me go to sleep. Because with Shimshon, uh, with my son, I had started laboring also around 8, like, same time. Um, and then I just, like, slept through the contractions kind of woke up for the contractions and then six o'clock in the morning I got up and 8 30 he was born so I was like well maybe I'll follow a similar trajectory so let me just go to sleep um I went to sleep but at that point I tried to sleep I I, I my friends were like one of my friends especially was like go to the hospital now and I'm like but they don't the bit of a free center doesn't take until your six centimeters dilated until um you know and, and then you're having contractions like every three to five minutes for an hour or something like that you know or until you feel like you're actually giving birth so I was like, I'm not just going there for nothing. Um, so, but I did download a contractions app to help me, you know, time the contractions better. So I don't just rely on my 
memory, um, which I know is susceptible to um, wishful thinking. Um, and I know myself, I do know that I'm more likely to be like, oh, it's fine, it'll be later, it'll be later. I'm like a classic procrastinator and I also don't, I, I don't want to like, I don't know, a minimizer when it comes to these kinds of things, like physical things. So download the app and then the, the contractions were indeed coming like every 10 minutes, you know, started maybe 15 and went very quickly to 10 and then it was like every few minutes and I was like, okay, that's actually pretty fast. <laughs> so I told the parents when it was, um, I told the parents when I first experienced it and then when they, when they saw that it hadn't gone away, um, didn't want to give them like false hope, but when I saw it had gone away, I contacted them and then when I was every 10 minutes, I contacted them and then when I realized it was coming every few minutes, um, I first called the hospital and told them that the birth center and told them that I think I want to come in because it's progressed pretty rapidly. Like from two in two hours, it went from every like you know twelve minutes to ten minutes to like five three minutes. You know, so I was like, okay, this is you know coming really fast, and I I want to come in. So um, then I called the parents that I'm coming in and um, called an Uber, packed up, woke up Yoel, packed up, um, and. You know, like 20 minutes later, we were in the car. Um, <laughs> you all laughed because I wanted him to bring bagels, and I was like, "Oh, can you put cream cheese or whatever in the bagels?" And he's like, "Too stressed out, of course." <laughs> so I was like, "I'll do it." So I'm like putting in bagels while experiencing a contraction, of course, and bragging about it. Sorry, y'all. Um, <laughs> anyway, we head to the um, birth center in an Uber. You know, have some contractions there. You know, contractions. They are what they are. Um, I read a. I decided to read webtoons to distract myself while I was there, you know, in the in the car, which glad I didn't get nauseous, usually I do. And when we got there, um, the midwives checked me. The parents had already been there because they um, are smarter than me. And when I told them that the contractions are 10 minutes apart, they came already, they, they left. So um, I think that was very smart of them because, <laughs> you know, they're probably better at timing than me. I would probably miss, you know, I definitely uh, tend to be late for everything. Um, the midwives checked me and I am um, six centimeters dilated, which is very nice. Um, they, my blood pressure was kind of high, but like I was experiencing contractions all the time, like every few minutes. And like, even if, um, the contractions kind of never like really went, fully went away. So like, yeah, of course, um, baby's heart rate was fine. And, um, then we go to the, you know, the birth room. Um, midwives very much are really respectful of how you want to conduct your labor. Um, I like to be alone, so I was like, I'll call you when I need you, <laughs> you know? What's that song? I'll call you when I need you, something. Da -da -da -da. Anyway, um, so, so, yeah, so I, I knew in advance, this is, this is, you know, kind of the interesting thing about, like, surrogacy, I guess. Um, you know, you, you are sharing a very private, intimate experience with other people, right? For whom this is also their very private, intimate experience. Um, and it happens to be, I like like to be alone during delivery. And um, I knew this would be something that would be, that I would have to process, like work through or accept or process or, you know, that would be um, somewhat awkward. So I talked to, you know, the parents in advance and I, I, you know, the midwives and I said, I like to be alone when I labor. and. I also know that when I'm around other people, I have this desire to like socialize and I feel like the need to talk. Um, and the parents were obviously like, you don't have to entertain us, like just do your thing. And the midwives were like, yes, you know, you can, we're not gonna bother you unless you wanna be bothered. Um, and one of the midwives was like, she also said she likes to labor alone. She's like, you can go to the bathroom, you know, and just be by yourself. Um, and my husband of course also knows that I like to be left alone because he's lived with me for a long time. Um, Anyway, so we get to the room and first, you know, we do socialize a little bit. Um, and, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to read a book, you know? So I'm, you know, kind of happy for my, proud of myself that I was able to do what I needed to do, you know? And again, I'm 34, like I should be able to do it at, at this point, but I am, I do think it was an achievement to not be like, feel the need to just socialize. And I'm sure, honestly, I'm sure the parents didn't want to socialize either. Um, they're probably, you know, anxious. Um, I might sometimes have that inability to recognize when people don't want to talk, possibly. So, um, anyway, Yoel was reading on his tablet, parents were on their phones, um, the dad put himself behind the screen, like in his own chair, um, so that was very nice of him, because, you know, it's just more privacy. Um, and I sat on the bed, like kind of lay down on the bed reading, um, and when I had a contraction, I would get up and walk around, because breathe through it, that's definitely more comfortable. Um, I finished the book I was reading, it was Emily Clark. No, what was his name? Paul, Heather Fawcett's uh, Emily's 
Encyclopedia of Fairies. Anyway, I finished that book and um, uh, started another one. Uh, Jade Dragon by Naomi Nobik. Um, and then I was like, I realized that lying on the bed was not exactly conducive to um, labor progressing because like I was having fewer contractions. So I got up and started walking around and I read for a while while walking um, and I kept going to the bathroom. Um, obviously because like the baby is like descending lower so it kind of felt like I had to go to the bathroom but anyway I think also some some privacy thing like for me and like had some alone time. So I was like you know what why don't I go to the garden. Um, they have a very lovely garden in the birth center which um, is like kind of like it's an interior courtyard and then the two birthing rooms are like facing the garden. So um, it's like the one of the walls of the birthing room is just a massive glass window into the garden. And um, it's really, really pretty. It's mainly like a rock and paver garden. Um, it has some bushes and it's just really nice. Um, so I went outside there and it's left alone, it was great. Um, Yoel at this point was just sleeping on the bed because it was like, we arrived there maybe 2.30 in the morning, something like that. Um, so yeah, he hadn't slept much, so he was just conked out on the bed. Um, and the parents were both on their phones, so I think the dad maybe was sleeping in the chair, I don't know. <laughs> but um, anyway, I walked outside. The garden was fantastic. I have, I loved it. It was actually like super pleasant, super positive. Um, definitely, I just walked around, you know, around and around singing. Um, I love singing. Um, and it was, it definitely, the pain of the contractions was like really very manageable when I was walking outside singing. Like it was not, it was much, much, it was, it was painful, but not like, it was really fine. Um, so once again, you know, it was interesting because, um, with Shimshon's birth and in general, like I always believed very strongly that the mind can control pain and, you know, I tell people about that and um people some people are skeptical and you know um it doesn't align with their own experience and it feels like it's a little bit delegitimizing their very painful experience of birth with like oh you know you're one of those mind control people and i totally get that and there's obviously um there's a, a sense in which i also you know it's i'm oh don't it's not like i don't experience pain and um, I understand that sometimes, you know, you can't properly use your mind to minimize what you're going through, but I am happy to report that like there are, th that it worked, you know, there are things you can do to make your experience more pleasant. Um, and like, for me, I love nature and I love singing. So like, and I like being outside and I like being alone. So all of those things just really, you know, took the same contraction that in the room walking around was let's say level eight painful outside. It was like level five painful, you know? So. I think physiologically the same thing was happening, but I think that, you know, mentally there are things you can do to make yourself experience the pain in a better way without denying the fact that the pain exists. Anyway, whatever, that's my screed. <laughs> um, it was very nice. I actually had a very nice time. Like it was, it was pleasant. Um, so, um, at some point, I don't keep track of the time, but, um, and maybe it was around five something at that point um i felt like starting the need to push i was waiting for that that like um feeling where you feel you have to push and i know with holly and shimshon it was like very marked and it was very clear here it was slightly less clear but it definitely felt different so i you know kind of like waddled back because previously i had walked fine but like at this point i was experiencing that like heavy pushing feeling so i like waddled back in and said um hey midwives i think i um in the pushing stage um, they had checked a couple times on the baby's heartbeat, by the way, in between. Oh, and when I came in, they also gave me uh, this thing. Because, um, what is that? It's like RSV? GSV? I don't know, something. Where you, um, you have, like, bacteria in your vagina. So they give the antibiotics so that the baby won't get infected. It was nice. Oh. Um, so, so I had that, you know, plugged in. That was, they gave me antibiotics early on, you know, when I came in. Um, anyway, I called the midwives. Um, I get into the bathtub. Uh, when I when I come in, I'd ask them to fill the bathtub, and I love it. I want like even just looking at it. By the way, like during contractions, when I, when I was in the room, like soothed me because another thing I love is water. And um, anyway, so when I felt I need to push, I like got in the bathtub, and um, it was great. I love the bathtub so much. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, and I mentioned the jewelry before. At this point, I still had my 
jewelry on. Um, I was wearing, I decided to wear like this red t-shirt dress because you know, red <laughs> and um, because blood, whatever. And uh, like a sports bra, um, so that would be, and my hat, this hat actually. So that would be more modest in case the dad was, you know, there. Um, he was behind the screen, so kind of was irrelevant, but whatever. Um, but uh, um, anyway, when I got in the water, um, I kind of paused, and I think maybe it was because, you know, you're sitting there, you have like Yoel, the mom, the midwife, her like assistant. I think she had two assistants, I forgot. And they're all like kind of watching you and like waiting for you. So it's like performance anxiety. And, um, which again, I knew was going to be a thing. <laughs> and one thing that's different is when I gave birth in Memphis, um, we'd had the same two midwives all the time. It was like a midwifery practice and two midwives that, you know, every time we went, we got to know these midwives. So I got to be really close with them. With this practice, you know, there's like a rotation of midwives. Um, so I don't necessarily know the midwives as well. And this particular midwife, I actually didn't, I think I met her once. So it's not like I didn't have such a close like, relationship with her um, or her two aides. So um, I felt like a contraction, but I didn't feel like I was pushing again. So I was like, you know, I'll call you like later. <laughs> So um, the midwives left and then I just um, sat and I, again, once again, I'm like proud of doing things that I needed. Um, I plugged my ear, which is my one hearing ear, which means like I have quiet. And I just like sat there and I closed my eyes and I was just in the zone by myself. I was like, I'm gonna ignore everybody because I'm the one giving birth. And if I want this baby to come out, you know, um, I have to do what I need to do to help the baby come out and not, be focused on other people and like their attention on me and like feel the need to please them or talk to them or you know I'm like this is just I have to just do what I need to do to help the baby get out um so I did that for a bit I don't know 10 minutes or something and just breathing through the contractions and then I felt the need to push again so I asked the mom to call the midwives in and um they came in I think I at that point also put on my music playlist um and you know again more closing my eyes to get in the zone um it was very nice i mean nice being a relative term but like it is nice to be have that like an interior focus you know um it's not in that at least for me like then not to feel the need to again be externally related it's just you your body <laughs> i sound so hippie doopy whatever but it is you know it's you your body and you know what you're going through <laughs> um Anyway, so I, I not sort of estimating many times, but I think I said at that point when, when you know I called the midwives back in, um, I felt felt like it was pushing. And again, it was not as clear cut as with Pavel and Shimshon, but um, I started to push and felt like the baby was going nowhere. Um, I didn't like feel the baby pop out. So I had had this expectation. Let me let me clarify things. With Havalea, I pushed for about 40 minutes. Didn't feel that long, but it apparently was around 40 minutes. And um, and I you know, was very frustrated. Like she kept crowding and coming out and like coming back in. Um, and then the midwife suggested that I stand up. So I stood up and she like slid right out. And with Shimshon, I had pushed twice while sitting in the water. And then I, I was like, wait, let me stand up, like I said last time. And then I stood up and he literally slid out. Like I, I think I barely pushed to get him out for the third push. And I was kind of expecting something similar now, especially because I feel like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I go to the bathroom every five seconds. I have such poor bladder control. Clearly my opening is large, but whatever. That was unrealistic. So maybe did not come out in three pushes. <laughs> um, so the contractions were very tolerable. Let's just say that um, I was, you know, completely quiet and just breathing through the contractions, nothing um, too crazy, but the pushing was, you know, extremely painful. We have a friend who, when he was, um, thank you, Ashley Friedman, hope it's okay, I attribute this to you. When he was um, a little kid, like four years old, there was a bee apparently, and he um, was trying to kill it with like a stapler or something ridiculous like that. And his father, our friend, Mr. Friedman said, uh, Hashi, you can't do that. It's Tar Bala Chaim, which is a classic Jewish term for, you know, causing suffering to creatures. You can't do that. You can't, you know, make creatures suffer, animals suffer. And Hashi was like, but the bee is doing Tar Bala Menchi, which is the, the bee is causing suffering to people. <laughs> so uh, we use that phrase every time a lot. So as I was pushing, I was like, this is Tar Bala Menchi. This is just torture, which it is. <laughs> so it really is. I guess everyone experiences different parts of labor differently, but like for me, at least pushing is like just pure torture. Um, so I was, you know, vocalizing, <laughs> let's just say. 
I was I was trying to think of a word I'm gonna describe it. My husband was it dignified grunting? I don't know, <laughs> dignified groaning. But um, anyway, so um, but yeah, pushing the baby out and like I I wanted to ask the midwives to check if I was like fully dilated and to check if the baby's head was like descending but I also was afraid to ask because I was like if the baby is not actually as low as I think it is um, I'm gonna be disheartened but I did eventually after like pushing for a little bit um, I did ask them to check and um, they checked and the, she's, the midwife said the baby is pretty low not like in the birth canal but low um, but then as she was saying that I felt the need to push again and that was like the final series of pushes so it was like I don't know three, four something pushes. Um, I had my leg up on the the bath, side of the bath, and um, the, the mom was there to catch the baby. I wasn't quite paying attention to who actually caught the baby because I was like looking away and just pushing, but the midwives and the mom were all right there. So I didn't know the mom wanted to catch the baby. I should ask her if she actually did, um, but someone caught the baby. Basically I pushed, I was like, is the baby coming out? And in my head, I will admit in my head, I was yelling at the baby, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> But yes, <laughs> I even made a stewing motion. I'm like, get out. So, <laughs> um, but yes, that in like a couple of pushes, the baby did indeed come out. I did kind of feel a baby and it's like so interesting. It's like, it was different than Shimshon because Shimshon like slid out. And here I had to like, you know, you push the baby out. It's like a physical activity. It's like, I don't know, pushing a car uphill or something. Like it's, you push the baby out. It's <laughs> very cool. It's a crazy experience. I know this is my third birth, but like birth is amazing and <laughs> it's crazy. It's just a crazy experience. It's just insane what you can do. You know, this baby comes out of your body and it's a human and then it grows up and it's like a person. It's insane. So yes, this is one of the reasons I'm like waxing rhapsodic. Yes, this is a motivator for me to be a surrogate because birth is amazing. Like it's just amazing. And yeah, pregnancy was pregnancy like the biggest thing that I realized with the surrogacy is that pregnancy is actually hard and it's not a fun thing and I understand why people don't want to do it and like it's physically taxing and it's annoying and it's women's curse and blah 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 I totally get it and that's something that has really been drummed into me with this time around rather than with Kabbalah and Shimshon where I was like oblivious um, so I totally get it but birth is still crazy amazing it's very painful and it's difficult and it's like when you do it you're like why do i ever subject myself to this voluntarily it's like insanity <laughs> but it's also amazing and anyway baby comes out um and i see you know the mom holding it and it's like oh this is like the moment i was waiting for just to see like the ah uh, uh, it was so beautiful i was so happy um it was just so nice to see you know the mom was completely focused on the baby and it was so nice and the baby was so cute the baby was a really cute baby it i don't think i was wearing my glasses at this point i can't remember actually i don't know but um i don't think so so i don't think i saw the baby so clearly like but I, it seemed very clean to me it didn't really cry he was calm and um and it was so cute anyway um mom was holding the baby and it was, it was very cute. It was squishy cheeks, you know, like a very cute baby. It was very, very pretty baby. Um, you know, not all babies are pretty when they come out <laughs> or newborns are pretty in general, but this baby was very cute, very cute baby. And it was so nice and it was really sweet. And I obviously, also I felt amazing after giving birth. Like I, the pain was gone, woohoo. Just felt back to normal, felt strong. I didn't even feel any like soreness um, at that point. <laughs> I, I guess it's the post birth high. Um, and I felt great. Um, so, uh, the mom, you know, just was holding the baby and being with the baby and I think I guess showing the dad eventually. And, um, the midwife was saying, we're ready to get the, um, placenta. So they also, the parents were collecting like the cord blood. So I think she wanted to catch the, the placenta and the cord. I think she withdrew. She got some, extracted some cord blood from the cord. It's very interesting. It's like a telephone wire. It's like, very cool. Um, anyway, so I'm standing there waiting. She asked me if I wanted to go to the bed to, give, uh, you know, deliver the placenta. And I said, I'd rather stay in the bathtub because <laughs> I love the bathtub. And, um, which actually it was anyway, a little bit later, but anyway, um, so, uh, it took about 20 minutes for the placenta to come out. Um, she caught it. I have a picture of it. I'm sure no one wants to see it, but whatever. I do have a picture of a nice bloody placenta. <laughs> um, 
anyway and then at that point they were starting to, this was like 20 minutes later so i started to feel kind of like weak um and so i like sat down on the sides of the bathtub um i had wanted to shower you know get dressed and i was like well i kind of think at this point i need someone to help me shower um but i sat down and i um they gave me some gatorade and then i asked yoel for um the date bars that i had brought along um just because i felt i needed more energy not that i was like i didn't was actually hungry and then, like i ate it and i was like hey, well i kind of only want to eat this but um apparently <laughs> um the next thing i know i um wake up and like the midwife is like talking to me and trying to get me to talk to her she's like mindy mindy and she's saying something it's kind of like in the middle of talking and um and she's like holding me by my like around her arms around me she's holding me in my chest and i was like huh. Um, so apparently I fainted and like started, and then the, the date bar is no longer in my hand. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, apparently I fainted and dropped the bar and you all said I started sliding into the bathtub. <laughs> um, so I thought I only fainted once. You all said I fainted twice and I was going in and out. So I'm assuming, I just don't remember the first time. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so she, I guess I, you know, had lost more blood than anticipated. Um, so she was like okay let's get you to the bed um and then i like put my you know legs around the bed and more blood came out just like boom on the floor and um the midwife was like oh do you need help walking to the bed anyway she got really concerned that i had fainted um and so she called a code blue which is i uh, like really when a patient is dying of cardiac arrest i think so and then tons of people came in it was very dramatic um and then i heard it's like not it's not actually a cold blue but i needed to get y'all in here um so she was like oh you know do you need let's help you get to the bed i was like in my head i was like i can walk i can walk i don't know if i actually could have walked but whatever i did walk with help so it was like two steps away from the bathtub you know um anyway so she got me to lie down on the bed and um basically started massaging my uterus to get it to harden um and while I was on the bed more blood came out and anyway she was very concerned about the amount of blood that was coming out of me and the fact that I fainted um so there was like tons of people around there they put another they gave me these um three shots injections of I should really remember what they're called but like um things that help your blood coagulate I think if I recall correctly and um yeah it was it was interesting because it's like very you know uh, not that I watch Grey's Anatomy, but that's what I, um, you know, imagine in clips of Grey's Anatomy, where it's like tons of people in the room, it's like medical emergency, and everyone's like panicked. I mean, anyway, and then, <laughs> but I have this thing where I get like the opposite reaction to medical stuff. I get super calm and I do not get emotional at all. Um, and it, anyway, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, there's, you know, a lot of people around and they're all like nervous. Um, and then one of them puts another IV in the arm, the other side, which thankfully is out by now. Um, and the midwife is talking to me. She's like, oh, you know, she's like, first of all, okay, I like, I appreciate when people do this, but I don't appreciate people do this to me because it makes me feel like a dummy. They're like, oh, you did great. You did amazing. And now we're going to do this and now we're going to do that. And I'm like, don't patronize me. Like, I'm an adult. Um, like, I'm not a baby. I'm, you know, I don't uh, it's okay like i'm not feeling emotionally overwhelmed like you could tell me what's going you know what's going on in a rational manner i don't need emotional hand holding anyway whatever it's fine um it's my particular reaction um to uh being treated like a child all right so um, back at home it's now friday so birth was tuesday the last video was wednesday now it is friday um sorry i got busy <laughs> i got interrupted so let's continue the story um which i'm sure is gripping and fascinating <laughs> so uh where were we we were on the bed yeah they gave me those injections um and then they were like okay you know what let's take you up to the or because i'm still not quite clear what they wanted to do in the or <laughs> Um, I think they wanted to check my uterus to see if there was anything in there and something else. So, fine. But in order to go to the OR, they had to cut off my clothes. It was so dramatic. Oh my gosh. And, um, you know, obviously I hadn't worn anything like fancy to the worth. I don't wear that red dress, but it was cut. <laughs> and my sports bra was cut, my one and only. Um, and it was very funny because, you know, normally like pretty modest. Like I don't go around, you know, like being exposing my body. but. 
you know, when you give birth, you just don't care. It just doesn't matter. There's like 20 people in the room. It's like, whatever. Here I am, wide open. <laughs> like, you know. Um, and I do have to say, like, I think I have a nice amount of body confidence. And I'm like, well, I look good. Yeah. Um, you know, even having just given birth with blood all over me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that was, that was fun. Um, anyway, so then they transferred me to a stretcher. Um, it was mostly women in the room, by the way. It was, um, the dad was still in the corner. And then, uh, <laughs> I don't know how much Yolo was looking, but he was in the room somewhere. Um, and there were like a two male staff, but who cares? Anyway, um... So they transmitted me to a stretcher. I, you know, had some more blood coming out while I was there. I kept asking for Gatorade because I really was feeling like faint at this point. So I just drank like a ton of Gatorade. Um, and normally, by the way, I only drink water. I hate like maybe juice occasionally, like a little bit, but the Gatorade is like gross to me normally. It's like so sweet. But here I was like, oh my God, get me more Gatorade. <laughs> um, and I was also, you know, trying to talk to the, the people, you know, say thank you and like, um, talk to them like a normal person. Uh, a big thing for me is that I remember when I was a kid, I read this story about this guy who got shot and he was going into surgery and everyone was like, oh my gosh, he's dead. And um, he joked with the surgeon before going in. He's like, I'm not dead yet. And the surgeon left and it kind of made the surgeon like work harder to save him. So I always feel like, um, you know, it's important to establish a connection with the people that are working on you because um, you know, they'll treat you better if they like you and if they see you as a person and not just a patient. So um, anyway, so I was trying to be like, thank you and hi, and you know, establish a relationship. So anyway, we go upstairs to the OR, um, in the OR, um, they, I think they stitched me up. I don't, did not feel this at all. It was so weird. So they, uh, apparently just, you know, kept massaging my uterus, um, scraped it out to see if there was anything left in there. Um, and then this part was uncomfortable put five pills up my rectum to help stop the bleeding. It was very uncomfortable. And <laughs> anyway, yes, that was a novel experience for me and I do not wish to repeat it. So, <laughs> um, and then they put, and they tried to, they put a mask on me to try to get me to, you know, to, to sleep. Um, I don't know quite why, like, I don't know what they were planning on doing that required me to sleep because I really did not feel anything besides for like the pills. Um, they apparently stitched up just like one little stitch. I didn't even feel it. It's, I, I don't know. Like there was, there was not, there was no pain. I maybe didn't feel that strong, but I didn't feel any pain. Um, uh, but I ended up, I was like, as the mouth thing was on me, I was like, I'm going to throw up guys. I'm going to throw up. And I did indeed like, boom, all the Gatorade that I just had just like gushed out. It was fascinating. Um, I don't normally throw up, like I'm not really sick that often. And normally throwing up like is accompanied by like very like a lot of pain before this was just like uh it's coming up and then boom just like <laughs> very very uh hygienic and beautiful and like you know i had my hair in a pony but like i'm sure some of it got on it and like whatever it was gross um um so yeah i have no idea why they wanted to to knock me out like i don't see the purpose um but that was it really um then I will say like while they were wheeling me away, so Yoel apparently didn't really quite understand what was going on. He, I, which I don't quite get, like I was very, very, very clear to me that it was because of blood loss. I don't know if Yoel just wasn't paying attention or he said they didn't talk to him, which I get it. Like they were talking to me, not him, but like he wasn't listening. I don't know, whatever. So, um, but so he was surprisingly, we had the exact opposite reaction. He was like, well, I'm sure it's gonna be okay. Like he was a little anxious and normally he was very anxious and I'm like zero anxious at all. But here I was like, well, I don't know. Like it's a very severe reaction. Like maybe, I guess I'm like, maybe I'm dying. I don't know. Like <laughs> I, I, I just didn't know. Um, and I was, I did ask when I went into the OR, I asked someone, I was like, what's the chances of fatil fatility, fatality? And she was like, what? And she's like, yeah, no, nah, nothing. And I was like, I wasn't sure whether to believe her, you know, I don't know if they were being like, oh, don't worry. Like it's okay. When really it wasn't. Um, so, but I will say like, in terms of that, you know, I guess for, for a long, 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 long time, like decades, you know, um, I've always had this idea that, you know, you can die at any moment. You may really never know. You can step outside your house, something can fall on your head. Car accidents happen all the time. You just never know, especially after um, our son Chimshon had an accident and Yoel had a, an accident. You know, it was really made clear to me that 
death is just something that happens and you never you have no control over it and it happens when it happens and that's it so and obviously before getting pregnant um you know you know that this is a possibility like obviously <clears throat> you know most pregnancies go well you really never know so um while i was like being wheeled away i was like well you know maybe i'm dying but i thought two things i was like well um you know now i get to know i'll get to find out what happens after death because it's a very interesting question right like what happens um so I'll, i was like i'll get to know that <clears throat> and um and I was like, well, I'm glad I'm not in pain, you know, because <laughs> that birth was painful and there was no pain now. So like maybe I felt a little weak, but like I was not in pain. So I was like, great, this is this is nice. I hope I don't have experienced pain as I die. <laughs> um, and I was like, do I have any parting words to say to you? I was like, well, you know, we have a relationship. We already like nothing new. I was like, bye. I love you. You know, like what am I going to say that hasn't been said already? Um, and I <laughs> So yeah, I thought of like my kids and I thought of y'all and I thought of my friends. I was like, well, they're going to miss me. So, oh, well, <laughs> they'll move on. Um, but it turns out there was actually no reason to, to be so dramatic. Um, it turns out postpartum hemorrhaging is actually fairly common. And um, we spoke with the midwife um, afterwards and yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly common and it didn't necessarily have to be quite so dramatic, but you know, she was worried that I was fainting. I had fainted, but basically like about one to 5% of women have, you know, excess bleeding and it's okay. It's normal. Um, it's not, you know, it's not something that has to be scary. So anyway, um, after the OR, they took me to the, I guess, OR recovery room, whatever it's called. Um, and then I got a blood transfusion. Um, it ended up taking like way longer than it should have, but whatever, we'll just skip over that. <laughs> um, and I was kind of like, at that point I was like pretty weak. So I was like fading in and out of sleep. Um, and the nurses who were like working on me were not interested in socializing. What is this nonsense? No one wants to socialize. I don't get it. Like I like socializing, but they were like not interested. So, um, so I just went to sleep, um, got a blood transfusion, got some IV with, uh, electrolytes. Um, and I got a catheter also in the OR, which I hate catheters. I had a catheter with, after my kidney surgery and it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, I, listen, I really don't think I was in a state to go to the bathroom. I agree. Like I couldn't have gotten out of bed because at that point I was actually so weak. I like couldn't even lift up my hands. I never had that. Um, but I had like both my hands had IVs in them, one for blood and one for what we call it, um, electrolytes. And I couldn't like lift my hand to scratch my nose. I was like, <laughs> like trying to get, you know, like get it to scratch my blanket. I couldn't do it. <laughs> so it was very interesting. I've never been that weak where I couldn't like pick up my hands. <laughs> it was weird. Um, but yes, I slept a little bit. After I slept, I, I felt better. I was able to move my hand a little bit. Um, and then Yoel came in at that point. We, we schmoozed. It, we came, he came in before I slept, um, before I got the, the blood transfusion. Um, and we talked. And actually, one of the things, since at that point I hadn't yet talked to the midwife and found out that it was bleeding was relatively normal, um, I thought that I couldn't be a surrogate again. And I was like, oh, shucks. Like, that's so disappointing because I really, really wanted to do it again. I wanted to do it several times. I had always wanted to throughout the pregnancy I wanted to do, after the birthday I wanted to do it. Like, I consistently, I still always wanted to do it. And um, I was disappointed because like, I thought that this was, a, I thought it was a severe medical, you know, thing, incident, and I thought I wouldn't be able to do it again. So I was like, oh, no, like, there go my plans. But um, so I discussed that with Yoel. Um, it was nice to have you all there. Anyway, he left. Um, my mom came, so she wasn't allowed in the room. So he went to go socialize with her. And then I just was sleeping anyway. Um, anyway, after, I have no idea. It took like two hours probably in that recovery room. Um, they wheeled me to a regular room. Um, like kind of like, the, I think it was the high risk recovery room for labor and delivery. Um, so I had my own room and then my mo mom came and it was very nice. We schmoozed. You all went to sleep on the couch. <laughs> And he like slept in the delivery room. He slept on the couch. Like anyway, because yeah, it was the middle of the night. Um, talked to my mom. We talked to her about everything that happened. Um, the midwives, a couple of midwives from the group came up um, and talked about like how long I would stay there. Um, another midwife came up and we had a long conversation about, you know, I talked, I asked her like, how serious was this risk? Cause I was thinking like, oh, if not for modern medicine, I would have let out to death. And she's like, actually, no, like it, it was fine. Like, you know, um, it didn't have to be, um, quite so dramatic. Like, and you know, there's more like low key methods of dealing with it. Um, but anyway, it was fine. Um, and then we had just long and long, nice DMT. Um, the parents came to visit 
and brought the baby over before they left. It was so cute. It was so nice. And it was actually nice. like I got emotional and, you know, it was very beautiful. And my, my mom got to meet the parents also and see the baby. And it was very nice. And then we had a long conversation with the midwife about like chesed or kindness in the family and how, you know, my... Um, well, I praised my parents and for their chesed and their generosity and how I learned it from them and um, talked about, my mom talked about my great grandmother who I'm named after, Mindel from Romania and how after the war she used to host like all the people who really had been, you know, mentally damaged by the Holocaust and, you know, they would have like 20 people at their house for meals and um, she talked about like the Kalev Rebbe who would uh, adopt, adopted like I think 50 children after the war, 50 orphans um, and a lot of other similar such stories. Um, it was a very nice conversation, like it was really, you know, talk about being parenting and teenagers and you know how like my mom and I used to fight a lot. Now we're we're pretty close and all those things. Um, so it was just a really nice conversation. Um, anyway, and then um, Yol and my mom, Yol woke up. They got me some food to eat. I ate. They left. I went to sleep. <laughs> um, slept for a bit and then woke up, caught up with friends. Um, I was feeling a little better at that point. Um, still not like super energy, but you know, whatever. Um... Yeah, and then this was, I guess, the rest of Tuesday. You know, a lot of just being on the phone for a bit. And this was very nice. Um, I kind of begged to get the catheter out, so I think it went out Tuesday night. Yes, somewhere Tuesday night. And um, then I went to sleep, slept like all night quite nicely. Um, you know, they interrupted a couple times to get vitals, but it wasn't a big deal. Um, the next morning I felt way better. Um, I actually, got dressed right after I did that video with you guys. They took away one of the, the IVs. Um, and then, yeah, I basically got dismissed, dismissed, released, whatever at like, I don't know, afternoon, you know, 12 o'clock, something like that. My parents picked me up and we, we went down to the birth center to get my <laughs> sneakers and like some stuff I'd left there. And, um, and we saw the parents again with the baby. They had been planning on coming to visit and it was very nice. And they gave me a present and it was super nice and it was just so nice and everything was nice. So all the wonderful things, all the, you know, fantastic, like lovely things. It was so nice to see the baby. It was like such a cute baby. Um, anyway, went home. Pretty sure I chilled the rest of Wednesday. So I... Maybe read some, caught up, you know, like more correspondence. Because obviously when you give birth, you have to like tell all these people and then you have to answer their messages. It's always like, you know, full-time correspondence secretary. Uh, and Baruch Hashem, thankfully, there's a lot of people who care, right? A lot of friends. And so friends came to visit. It was so nice. I had two friends come to visit and bring presents for my friends. It was so sweet. Um, I'm very like overwhelmed and like gracious and grateful for all the the care and concern it's really really nice um people from my choir are super nice and like our local friends are super nice and family like my aunt called from israel while we were in the hospital it was so nice it's just so nice i love how everyone's being super nice it's very nice wow i use the word nice excessively <laughs> um but i was i was kind of tired so like in between friends i would just go back up and sleep a little bit um but yeah and then i went to sleep relatively early and then yesterday thursday um I felt great. I felt fantastic. I like took my kids to school, took my, you know, took myself to have like a weekly therapy for parenting, I took myself there. Um, I did realize that like I couldn't walk as fast as I normally do. Um, but I felt really good. Um, then I did errands all day, computer errands all day. I just sat at the computer and just like, oh my gosh, the errand list is are freaking ever long, but whatever. <sighs> Everyone deals with that, I guess. Um, and then, but towards the end of the day, I was like, oh, I'm getting tired, <laughs> you know, earlier than I normally get tired. And um, I had done laundry and stuff. And I was like, maybe I should like slow down on the physical stuff. And obviously everyone's telling me this. They're like, rest, rest, rest. And I'm like, what is this rest concept? I feel great. But um, I'm just starting to realize, okay, like, maybe I should slow down on the physical things. Um, physically, how I felt, I felt great. Um, barely bleeding, which is great. Um, you know, still sore somewhat, but really not like crazy. Um... <clears throat> I was trying to prevent my milk from coming in, which this is like a surrogacy thing. Oh my gosh, this video is so long. Anyway, I was trying to prevent my milk from coming in because I don't want to breast milk. I don't want breast milk and I don't want to pump milk because I hate it. And I know, like, like I said, my altruism extends up to this, you know, using my body for pregnancy. Yes. Breast milk pumping. No. Um, <clears throat> so I had wanted the, to get prescribed like cabergoline or something. Anyway, it was after like a billion requests. I was not prescribed Kevergoline, let's just say. Um, everyone was just like, you know, use cold compresses and don't let it get warm and use cabbage leaves and um, 
maybe get you know Sudafed or Benadryl. So I happened to have had Sudafed at home. So I took Sudafed, ate some mint that my mom bought me, vitamin B. I had vitamin. I read that vitamin B helps. So I got. I have B12, so I took B12. I don't know if that quite qualifies, but whatever. Um, and then wearing like a sports bra. My mom was very nice. She got me a tight, you know, replaced my cut up sports bra. <laughs> and um, yeah, but I think my milk did come in. I just barely noticed it. So. Hopefully it'll go away soon and it doesn't seem to be that obtrusive. Um, so thankfully for that, hopefully it'll stay that way. Um, and yeah, so now it's Friday. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel fine. I don't feel, I actually feel like I have less energy than yesterday, which is odd, but I think that there's also the element of like the high that you get after giving birth because it's such an amazingly emotional experience and like, woohoo, it feels so great. So I think that has finally like gone down. Um, and you know, I feel like back to normal, right? It's interesting because like my theory in life in general is that, and it's not just a theory, this is like, you know, psychology studies have shown that people's um, baseline emotions tend to, they, they tend to have a baseline of emotional, you know, homeostasis, right? They're they're either this level of happy, this level of sad, or this level of whatever. People usually are consistent and like life events, you know, big life events will change it, but only for a little bit, right? So like having a baby, right? will change it for a little bit, but in general, you know, it's back to your homeostasis of like, are you usually this, you know, grouchy or grumpy? So now I feel like I'm kind of back to normal. Um, you know, life goes on, right? I still have all those errands. I have, um, I took off work until next Monday. Um, I feel like I physically could go back to work, but like mentally I do kind of want a break. Um, and I, I was trying to get a lot of chores done, but I'll be back on Monday. You know, life goes on. My kids have school. My daughter has a Shabbaton. Um, you know, there's housework to do, which I'm kind of, I just said like, don't do it. You know, let y'all do it today. <laughs> um, my, my to-do list. I still have to fill out forms for school. I still have to file taxes. I still have to pay the bills. You know, all this stuff just, just goes on back to normal, right? Um, so... So that's where we are. Um, I guess, you know, closing thoughts. Um, it was a beautiful experience. I am so grateful that I did it. I feel very jubilant. You know, I feel like this like score, like I did it. You know, there's a couple of things in my life where they're kind of like stretch goals as they call them. There are things that they're a little out of the ordinary and you don't know if you'll be able to do them or not. And just the like, because they're so rare and unusual, you're like, I'm not gonna be able to do it. And am I gonna be able to do it? And like, is it going to be possible? So for me, it's things like, because I grew up Chazkidish, going to college and getting a master's degree, um, or like living in a community that is suitable for me or having a husband that is you know, um, not Hasidish and didn't grow up like five blocks from me. So there's a bunch of things in my life that even though it's been many, many years since I have them, I'm like, every so often I just like think about it. I'm like, yes, I did it. I did it. So, you know, for example, like I live in a great community that I love with people who I can talk to about the things that I want to talk to with no censure or judgment. Yes, I did it. Or like, I have a master's degree. Yes, I did it. Or like, and they say, I don't need a kidney. Yes, I did it. And having a surrogacy, you know, I wanted to do it. I thought about it years ago and then I kind of forgot about it. But like, you know, it's rare and unusual. I think a lot of it is just like the mental block of like, you're going to do something very strange and different um, and that people don't really do. And it's not like the act is so difficult necessarily, right? I mean, pregnancy, everyone gets pregnant, right? But it's like a, you have to overcome that mental challenge of like, people don't really do it. And I am just like, yeah, I did it yes, like I, I got to do what I really wanted to do. That is a profound thing to do. Like it's a once in a lifetime experience. There's very few things that can parallel it. I mean, it is, it's giving birth to a baby, everyone, you know, not everyone, but like many, many people give birth to babies, but um, to do it for someone else, it's like, it's it's amazing. And I'm so happy I did it. And I would love to do it again, Bezrat Hashem. Um, it is a plan now, you know, and God willing things should go well and everything should be healthy, etc. But like, so far, I would love, you know, love to do it again. And I'm very happy about it. And I'm just grateful for this experience. And if you've made it this far, um, you hopefully enjoyed <laughs> and um, learned something. And I guess, you know, my parting takeaway is like, <laughs> let me tell you what to do. But like it, the whole reason I did this vlog, which I think is like kind of like belly gazing and narcissistic and like, oh my gosh, who wants to listen to me talk about myself and <laughs> for an hour or however long this video is going to be. But the reason is, is um, you know, I hope that people will consider surrogacy or know more about surrogacy, both, um, you know, if they need a surrogate or if they want to be a surrogate. And um you know, if you have any questions, I guess I think I was pretty long winded in this video, but if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, and I would encourage people to 
to hopefully take advantage so that more people can have their beautiful babies in this world. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening.